Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm really excited to walk you through my custom NAS build featuring a fully 3D printed mini ITX case with stackable expansions. This build is all about maximizing storage while keeping things compact thanks to its amazing modular case design that I printed myself. Let's dive right in. So as you can see the case I'm using for this NAS is based on a model I found on printables.com it's called mod case and uh, what's really cool about this is it's stackable so you can easily expand storage without uh, needing to completely rebuild the system so this uh, bottom section here uh, has been uh, printed in a single uh, go uh, you have the option to print it in uh, two sections and join them together afterwards but uh, my printer has uh, large enough the bottom section is for storing the drives so it can fit five drives let's talk about the design of this 3d printed nas case it's split into two sections which makes it super functional the bottom section is specifically designed to hold five 3.5 inch hard drives which gives plenty of room for uh, storage expansion and uh, on the top section let me just adjust my camera on the top section you have room for a mini ITX motherboard and a power supply so it doesn't support the normal ATX power supply it either supports SFX or a flex uh, power supply so we are going to use the flex PSU in this uh, build here and also on top uh, we have this fan grill uh, and I have already installed a 100 and 40 millimeter knock to a fan on top of it and also this uh, uh, this is the holder for uh, 2.5 inch drives and on the bottom I have also installed a 120 millimeter fan and uh, let's take a look at the power supply which I bought from China especially Alibaba so this is the user manual that it came with This is the power cable. Let's just take it out of the box. So one thing I did was uh, I specifically requested the seller to give me the power supply which is more silent. So these are flex PSUs and these are meant to be running in the server environment so these are very loud but uh, this one is not so this is the 24 pin motherboard connector and it has sufficient SATA connectors for my needs all of the parts of this case uh, for example the bottom rear the front and the top have been printed separately on the printer and then join them together with uh, the screws and also I had choice to either go with this uh, mesh front or the plain one just like uh, the bottom of the section uh, but I chose to go with uh, the mesh one because of uh, better airflow also uh, I have printed the side panels uh, they are mesh as well now let's take a closer look at the motherboard I'm considering for this NAS. This board supports Intel's uh, 12th generation as well as 13th generation processors uh, and it has a LGA 1700 socket. Uh, the, the processor that I'm using for this uh, build is Intel's uh, Core i5 12500T. Uh, the, re the reason I'm choosing T is uh, because it's a 35 watt processor but it still provides more than enough power for handling data management tasks, streaming and even handling some light virtualization without unnecessarily uh, raising the electricity bill and uh, being a 35 watt chip is very crucial for a NAS that is going to be running for 24 7 while keeping the power consumption low on the motherboard uh, it features support for dual channel DDR5 RAM and it supports up to 4800 MHz so I'm going to use this uh, crucial 8GB DDR5 uh, 4800 MHz 
uh, single memory slot for time being i have planned to upgrade this uh, system to 32 gigabyte but for now i'm just going to go with 8 gigabyte sticks for storage this board has excellent expandability it includes three m.2 slots one on the top and two are on the back and uh, i believe that this uh, uh, ssd slot on the top supports pcie 5 and uh, these are pcie 4 on the back these both are, are pcie 4 and also uh, it has eight sata ports and it has its own uh, sata controller we have a PCI X16 slot which I believe is uh, PCI 4.0 and uh, I will be plugging in the NVIDIA T1000 GPU in here so I will be using it uh, for Jellyfin transcoding purposes so it is very capable GPU uh, I have tested it with uh, four simultaneous streams and uh, it was working really fine uh, I have tested it I guess uh, from 4k to 1080p transcoding and it handled all of the four devices at the same time uh, pretty well so yeah i will be using this card now let's take a look at the motherboard io and uh, all of the other features of this motherboard so it has three usb 3.0 ports and uh, one usb type c port which supports uh, uh, 20 gigabit per second and uh, here we get hdmi 2.0 interface which supports 4k at 60 hertz and uh, display port 1.4 uh, which also supports uh, 4k at 60 hertz and then we get this both ethernet jacks uh, which both are uh, 2.5 gigabit uh, which is fine for my use case and then we get this uh, microphone in and line out so there is one interesting usb port on the top of the motherboard uh, which is for i guess a bootable usb drive uh, if you are using unread or uh, something like that i almost forgot to talk about the storage so i will be using four four terabyte seagate ironwood drives uh, in raid z1 configuration so let's just install the drive let me just show you how it's done so you have to align this uh, slider with the grooves inside the module so you just align it here and just push it inside so that's how easy it is to install the drive and on the front we get this huge mess of wires so fortunately we have this cover on the front to cover all of the mess so let me just install it so this is what it looks after installing the cover and on the back it looks like this uh, i've left this caddy open because i have planned to add another drive uh, which i will be replacing it with another one now let's talk about the upper part of the system which uh, includes the motherboard and the power supply so the first thing that you will notice is i have replaced the stock fan that came with the motherboard and i have installed a noctua fan uh, which is very silent the stock fan that it came with was very loud and it was unbearable in the living room so i just replaced it and uh, it was a great decision so on the other side of this uh, we have the power supply and the ssd mm, it can fit up to three 2.5 inch drives uh, so it could be hard drive or an ssd so this is the power supply that we looked earlier and uh, it's working really great let's just install the gpu in here So there you have it the whole system is finished now we just left with installing the side panels let's just do that
So that is it guys. If you enjoyed this build or found it helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more tech content. Let me know in the comments if you have done a similar project or if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.